Well, the first underappreciated cost of fugitive material is simply the cost of lost material. So some of your facilities, if you have material skate escape the conveyors, that product might be contaminated and you can't sell it. If you're a coal fired power plant, that product might be through your cleaning procedures washed down the drain and you lose it. You may not be able to sell it or you may have purchased it and not be able to use it. That's the cost of lost material. So let me give you a couple of examples here. Let's say that the rate of lost material at your facility is one sugar packet per 60 seconds per minute. So one little bit of sugar, one little packet of sugar is escaped from a conveyor in the course of a minute. If you apply that over a year, that means you're actually losing 2.5 short tons in a year's time. Now, again, this is going to vary a little bit depending on industry and the price per ton of your product. But let's just take $20 per ton. That means you're losing 50 bucks in a year's time. However, that's one conveyor. Let's just extrapolate that out over the entire plant and say you've got 20 belts and you're losing $1,000 in a year's time. Okay, but most conveyors don't lose material at the rate of one sugar packet per minute. If you're losing fugitive material at a rate of one sugar packet per minute, you're doing better than most. One shovel full per minute is maybe a little more real world. So that at the rate of a year results in 5,184 short tons over the course of a year. If we apply that $20 per ton, we're losing $103,000 a year on one belt. If you've got 20 conveyors, the cost of lost material that you're either running down the drain or putting it into a scrap pile or maybe selling at a different price point is now $2,073,000. So you can see just in the cost of the actual product that escapes the conveyor, it can be significant. But it's not only the cost of material that you've got to take into consideration. We also have to um, we also have to consider the added cleanup costs. Or how about this? We also need to consider the cost of paying someone to throw your material away. So let's talk a little bit here about the costs of cleanup. So um, let's say you got a belt, right? And this belt spills carries back material. Okay, and we got to send people in to clean that up. Okay, so let's say these people that clean up around this conveyor belt spend an hour and a half per day cleaning up this mess. Okay, um, that is, um, and let's say that they're getting paid $45 per hour. Let's say there's two of them, right? We don't usually send a guy by himself. So we're gonna send two dudes with their shovels. So two guys, $45 an hour, uh, hour and a half, what is that? You're basically spending $135 per day to clean up this conveyor belt, okay? So let's turn this into a year. Let's say this plant doesn't run um, 24 seven, but let's say it runs uh, 300 days a year. So now we're paying, uh, what is this, 40,500 in a year's time. Not in lost material, but in workers to throw our lost material away. 
Okay, so that's the cost. But let's say again, we don't have one belt. We have 20 belts. So where are we at here? I think I'm right if my math is off. Let me know. So now all of a sudden, what we thought wasn't a big deal by sending the guy out to clean, um, you know, once a day for an hour and a half or two guys for once a day over an hour and a half. If we calculate that over the course of the plant and of the course of a year, we're close to a million dollars. That's on top of that potential lost material. So these numbers might be a little bit different compared to what your labor rates are and how often you're cleaning, but this is a calculation that you can and should do. So that's not the only thing to take into consideration when we're talking about reducing fugitive material. One of the biggest problems that we have with fugitive material is the increased belt mistracking. Okay. All rolling components steer the belt. Or let's say this, all rolling components have influence on the belt's tracking. Head pulley, tail pulley, bend pulleys, return rollers, carrying idlers, all those rolling components have influence on the belt's tracking. In order for that rolling component to steer the belt correctly, it must be four things. It must be touching, it must be rolling, it must be aligned or square, and it must be clean. Is this rolling component clean? No way. So return roller totally built up with carry back. That's gonna cause that belt to miss track. Now, once that belt miss tracks, it's gonna create additional problems, additional labor to react to those problems. So that's one of the kind of underappreciated cause of fugitive material is that it causes our belts to miss track. The other concern I have is premature equipment failure is a concern with carryback. So you see here, because of that belt miss tracking, this belt has rubbed into this bracket, that's a huge safety concern. And that bracket's going to have to be changed out. So there's all kinds of premature equipment failures that are a result of dust and spillage and carry back. Another concern is grooves in the belt. Material, when it's not handled properly, can get wedged in between skirt boards and cause the belts to groove. That's going to cause your belts to fail prematurely and that's added cost to the operation. Another concern is the increased maintenance cost at the facility. So you can save all kinds of money by keeping material on the belt, reducing that lost material, reducing the cleanup cost, reducing the excess equipment failure, and it, reducing the excess conveyor maintenance. So fugitive material buries idlers, buries components, um, gets into structural support and that requires cleanup and placement parts and contract services. And they're all self-perpetuating, meaning that if I have this problem, it also creates this problem and then this problem can create another problem. Next thing you know, you've got an incredibly inefficient facility compared to what you could be. Um, you know, we've talked about this for many, many years. We've done some webinars on this, but um, there's no question that fugitive material causes um, plant safety to decrease. Another concern that you should think about is worker, not only worker safety, but worker morale. So think about that. You're paying workers to wake up in the morning and know that they're going to clean up a pile of material that they cleaned up the day before that and the day before that. And after they get it cleaned up for this day, they're going to have to clean it up again tomorrow. 
if you're providing that type of work environment, you're probably not retaining the highest caliber of person. The higher caliber people aren't going to continually do those jobs. They're going to seek. They're going to seek other options. So there's also that added problem of respirable dust. So um, M. Shaw hasn't hasn't finalized this or hasn't hasn't spoken to this um, quite yet. However, OSHA in the U.S. has a uh, PEL, which is permissible exposure limit. Basically, that defines how much a worker can be exposed to respirable dust. Now, if you're not familiar with respirable dust, uh, I'm not a doctor. Um, my wife's a nurse, so I'm, you know, pretty well qualified on this. Uh, but basically, respirable dust is dust that you can breathe in. However, the body can't filter this dust because it's so small. So the anatomy of the body between the nose hairs, the mucus in your sinuses, uh, the lymph nodes in your lungs, all those working together, it has the ability to filter that air that you breathe in. However, there's limitations to that filtering system that the body has, and there is dust that is so fine, so microscopic, that you breathe it in, and it doesn't get filters. So it enters your lungs, and it stays there. And it causes all these problems of silicosis, and black lung disease, and some of these other uh, Respira uh, respiratory problems that some of our retired or longtime workers um, are now experiencing. So OSHA is reacting and they basically won't allow a worker to spend more than eight hours time weighted average um, in an environment with respirable dust. So all these things compound, 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 and um, that's the kind of those underlying reasons why facilities um, may not fully appreciate the problems with fugitive dust. 